Blessed are you. This is the second most famous teaching of Jesus behind only the Lord's Prayer, I would say. And Jesus said, blessed are you. The Greek word can also be translated happy or fortunate, but it has the same root as the word for prepared or ready. Blessed, fortunate, prepared. A condition of acknowledgement, readiness, expectation that you're about to receive something, receive a gift, a gift from God, of course, they will inherit and they will be filled and they will receive is all too passive and person-centered. God will give these gifts. They will receive the gifts from God. Those who are poor in spirit are blessed, are ready. God will give them heaven. Those who mourn are ready. God will give them comfort. Those who are meek, literally powerless, are ready. God will give them the land, the earth. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, which in the Gospel of Matthew means doing what God truly wants. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are ready. God will give them what they're hungry for. Those who are merciful are ready. God will give them mercy. Those who are pure in heart are ready. God will give them God's true presence. Those who make peace are ready. God will give them God's true inheritance. Those who do what God truly wants, even when they are opposed for doing so, are ready. God will give them heaven. Maybe we should recite all of that instead of the Lord's Prayer every week. I truly believe that the condition that God wants us to be in to try to achieve, to ready ourselves for, is a condition where we are prepared for God to give gifts. Where we are humbly grateful that God gives gifts. Where we're open to the truth and the hope that God is coming to give these gifts. And not just to us. I mean, listen to that list again. Poor, mourning, powerless, desperate to do God's will above all else, utterly merciful, perfectly pure in heart, making peace wherever they go, doing what God truly wants. We certainly can fit into some of those categories. And we even try to fit in sometimes. But we don't want to be poor. We don't want to be powerless. We don't want to be weeping. And sometimes we don't even want to be merciful or to be making peace. We instead want to take vengeance and to get what's ours and to be the ones who win. You are blessed when you, if you. We know that Jesus isn't describing conditions that are easy to be, even if they're just states of mind, and much less easy to be if they're put into practice, into action. In fact, we know that Jesus is describing some conditions that we spend much time and energy trying to avoid, most of us. You are blessed. You are fortunate. You are ready. You are prepared. Or rather, they are. The ones that you, that is we, pity. The ones you, that is we, disregard. The ones you, that is we, think aren't responsible enough. The ones you, that is we, think aren't realistic enough. And it's both and. Don't worry. I truly believe that the condition that God wants us to be in doesn't press too hard on us to believe that we ourselves aren't included if we're relatively religious or relatively well-off or relatively self-satisfied or relatively in any of the other conditions that the gospel has some not-so-comforting things to say about. Even if we eat with Pharisees a lot, Even if our righteousness struggles to exceed the low bar that's set by the Pharisees, God wants to give us gifts too. I truly believe that. But the reason I harp on the we-they thing is because we as human beings in this time and place and culture fall too easily into the age-old trap of thinking that God is primarily coming for us, primarily concerned with us, primarily pleased with us. And that those other people are either going to be eh, round the edges recipients of God's spillover charity, you know, a little bit of grace, through us, maybe, or they'd better start getting with our program or they're going to be sorry. This is deeply human. We like to regard ourselves in mirrors and imagine that this right here is the pinnacle of God's creation. Me. Us. Ours. 
But Jesus keeps coming back again and again and locating God's gifts and mercy and love in places that are difficult for the proud and the prosperous, the powerful and the self-satisfied to wedge themselves into. At another place, he says that famous thing about a camel in the eye of a needle. And it's still another place he addresses our friends, the Pharisees, by saying, check it out, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven, already entering in, and you guys are stuck at the back of the line. I'm not saying we're the Pharisees. I'm definitely not not saying you are. Maybe I am. But I truly believe that the condition of mind and heart and life that God wants us to be in, receptive and grateful and hopeful and open, I truly believe that that is sometimes a hard condition for us to get ourselves into. I truly believe that we struggle to do it. We who are too busy, we who are too distracted, we who are too easily riled up to to anger and suspicion and separation, we who are too quick to look for someone to blame or to believe that there is, we who are always vulnerable to being led back into our pride, into ignoring, into self, into we. Lord, let our hearts be good soil. We know, we know that sometimes they are not. But I truly believe, we truly believe, that God is and that God loves and that God is bringing the gifts of love and mercy and light and hope into the world, yesterday and today and forever, eternally. And those gifts are for us, too. Even when we struggle to be the merciful, Even when we struggle to be the peacemakers, even when we turn away from the poor, even when we participate in disempowering the children of God, they will receive because God is good. And we will too because God is good. I believe that. You believe that. We believe that. The angry voices and the judgmental thoughts and the ways of the world push against that. Push against us in that. Always. Maybe we should remind ourselves with these words more often. Blessed are they. Maybe we need a regular reminder that God's gifts are free and that God's gifts are without limit and that God's gifts are revealed in and through any people, all people, the people that we ourselves struggle to be. May the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.